Hey everyone, it's I Talk Apple, and I don't know if you remember this, but a couple of months ago I made a video about doing a clean install of Mountain Lion on your Mac, and I never really finished the second part of that video, which was setting up or, well yeah, pretty much setting up a new Mac or what I do after I do the fresh install. So I'm going to do that video right now. So this video is divided into three parts, transferring files from your backup, apps that I download immediately when I get my new Mac, and preferences that you should probably look at and adjust. So we will start with the file transfer. So here is a finder window, and I'm going to go to my external hard drive under the devices tab. And depending on how you backed up your files, this might go differently for you, but I just used the Time Machine backup. If you use a Time Machine backup, go ahead and click on Backups, your computer, and then you've got folders with all the dates. If you're doing this um, right away, which you would be, uh, you would click on the folder called Latest because that's your latest backup. For me, I did the clean install back in May, I think. So this latest backup is gonna be from like today, so that's not gonna be useful. Although for the purposes of just demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on latest because why not? So I'm gonna open another folder now. I did that by hitting Command N on my keyboard. You can also go to File, uh, New Finder Window. And so this finder window is for my current Mac, and then this finder window is for my external hard drives, which are backups. So I'm gonna click on Macintosh HD, click on users, uh, whatever your username was, and then here you are, you're back at your Mac from, well, before you did a clean install. And so first I'm gonna show you how to transfer your iTunes library, because that's pretty essential. So all you have to do is click on the music folder and within the music folder, there's an iTunes folder. Uh, it's really simple. You just drag the iTunes folder from your backup into the music folder on your new or cleanly installed Mac. So I've done that already, of course, uh, because I did this process a really long time ago, but it really is as simple as taking it and dragging it and dropping it and depending on how large your iTunes library is, this could take a while. And so transferring files really is that easy. You just drag and drop whatever files and folders you want from your backup into uh, your finder on your new Mac. So another thing that I did was transfer my pictures. So here's the pictures folder on the backup. Um, I dragged my iPhoto library. I also transferred my Aperture library my wallpaper folder, that's very important. Um, so you don't wanna be stuck with just Apple stock wallpaper. It's really that easy there, that's really all there is to it. If you did do a clean install, I mean the goal of the clean install is to really start fresh, and so I did not transfer that many files back onto my Mac, just the pictures in the iTunes library and a few documents, but that was it really. And everything from your Mac before is still on your uh, external hard drive in case you ever need it. So now I'm gonna quickly show you some apps that I download immediately when I get a new Mac or do a clean install because I cannot imagine using a computer without them. So the first one is Alfred, which I'm actually going to use to open the Mac App Store. This is what Alfred looks like. I've mentioned it in so many videos. It appears in almost every screencast because I use it to launch apps but uh, you can launch apps by just typing the app in. I have it so I can open files or folders by hitting the space bar and then typing in the name of whatever I wanna open. You can access the Max dictionary by typing define and then a word. You could do Google searches like so. There's so many things you can do on Alfred, but I'm just gonna open the App Store. If you are new to the Mac, if this is your first Mac ever, then you should probably uh, browse through the App Store, look at the top apps, uh, click on the new to the App Store uh, banner over here. That'll take you to a page with some recommended apps to get started. First, I'm going to recommend that you click on the Purchases tab 
uh, at the top here. If you have owned a Mac before, then this page shows all the apps that you've ever downloaded from the Mac App Store so you can easily install them on your new Mac. And as you can see, I've downloaded a lot of apps, but I actually only installed like three of them or four of them on my new Mac because I did really want to start fresh. So for example, I installed iPhoto because it's kind of essential. Um, I installed ScreenFlow because how else would I make these videos and a few other apps. The next app that I recommend from the Mac App Store is Evernote. Evernote is free. It's a cross-platform app, so it's available on iOS devices, Android devices, Windows, Mac, on the web. So um, it's something that I've tried to incorporate into my life for several years now, but I didn't actually do it successfully until this summer because I decided that I'm actually going to use it to keep track of everything. The next app that I recommend is Clip Menu. It's a clipboard manager, which means that it saves your copy paste history and i always have this running uh, that way when that way you don't have to worry about copying something and then copying something else later and then wanting to paste the thing that i copied before uh, because you can save like tons of recent uh items that you've copied on your clipboard so it sits in your menu bar and you can look through your history and i do have a video where i talk about this, so there will be a link to that in the description. Check it out. The next app that is absolutely essential is Dropbox, and you can go to dropbox.com to download it. Um, it acts as a folder on your computer, so if I open the finder here and click on Dropbox, this is my Dropbox folder, and I keep all of my school files in my Dropbox account. Um, that way I can access them from any device, whether it's a computer at school by going to dropbox.com and downloading the file, or my MacBook Air, or my iPhone, or my iPad. No matter what, um, my school stuff is always with me. That way I don't have to worry about forgetting to print something or needing to edit something but not having it there with me. It really is a lifesaver, and I think I'm going to make a video all about Dropbox because, um, I mean, obviously not for like the computer savvy people who use it, but for people who are wondering like what the big deal is about it, I'll probably make a video about it. So let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about Dropbox. Another app that I downloaded right away is Google Chrome. It's hitting my dock. It's just good to have an alternative web browser and um, I like Chrome way better than Firefox and sometimes I like it better than Safari as well. And for the final part of this video, I'm just going to take you through some system preferences. Um, just for some tips, I guess. There are three preference panes that I uh, change when I have a new Mac. The first one is desktop and screensaver. It's really easy to add um, like a wallpaper folder into here. Just click the plus button and then find your wallpaper folder. Although I have not done this on my iMac, I've done this on my MacBook Air, which is um, I've actually made different types of wallpaper folders. So abstract wallpaper, landscape wallpaper, and that way when I add them, um, it's just easier to narrow it down because this way I have one huge wallpaper folder, but there's so many different types of wallpapers in here, it can get overwhelming. The next preference pane I recommend looking at is uh, if you use a laptop, which means you have a trackpad, or if you have the magic trackpad, definitely take a look at the trackpad pane because if you're unfamiliar with all of the gestures available, then you can learn them here by hovering over a gesture and then you can watch the little video demonstration. Or you can change the gestures if uh, you prefer certain gestures or you can disable gestures if you'd like. Uh, if you have a mouse, you can go to the mouse preference pane and change the uh, tracking speed and things like that. And then the last pane that I recommend that you look at is the notifications one. Um, on Mountain Lion, uh, you have Notification Center, which is useful, but it can be really obnoxious um, sometimes. So, for example, I took Game Center out of Notification Center, and you do this by clicking on the app, 
and then you can uncheck the show and notification center and uncheck badge app icon make it so no alerts show up and that's what i've done with game center because i don't use it at all and i get tons of like friend requests on it and it gets really annoying when you get banners and sounds playing on your computer when you don't even use the app <laughs> so i turned it off and for some apps it might be useful like um, for reminders for example I actually have it set on alert, so you physically have to remove the alert to get it off your screen. Well, that's really it. I just recommend going through the apps and checking the preferences. Those are the three preference panes that I recommend that you look at um, to customize your Mac to your liking and sort of make your life easier, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what apps you download when you get a new Mac. I'm very curious. Maybe there's something I'm missing out on. Um, also, if you have any video requests, comment. Um, if you have any questions, they can be about anything. Again, comment because I am doing an Ask I Talk Apple video. So you can comment below or uh, tweet at me with the hashtag, I think it was Ask I Talk Apple. So that way I can keep track of the tweets that I get with questions. And yeah, that's it. Thanks very much for watching and um, I never know how to end these. Goodbye.